Good day, everybody. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create your own floating candlestick effect using DaVinci Resolve. Now, I could just green screen the one I created and put that up for you and make it easy, but then you haven't learned anything. And down the road, you may want to create a completely different effect. So let's give you the tools where you can make your own stuff and not have to rely on anybody else. So first thing we will do is bring in a candlelight video from YouTube. And you can see this has a channel graphic on the front and the end of it. Well, we can get rid of all that by moving the playhead to the sections we want to cut. And using Control plus B on our keyboard, which is the blade shortcut, we can split that video apart. And then just select everything you want to get rid of and hit the delete key. And that's going to shift everything over on the timeline for us. Now we need to get rid of this green screen and there are a few ways to do that on the edit page. But I like to use the delta keyer in the fusion page when I need to get rid of a green or a blue screen. To find the delta keyer we can pull up the search menu by holding control and spacebar. And then you can search by either delta or key, both will bring it up. And then click on it and select add. Make sure everything's connected up the way it's supposed to be. Then in the inspector, we want to take the eyedropper next to background color and drag that onto the green. And that's going to remove all the green behind this candle. In this video, we're really more interested in the flame than the candle itself. So we can get rid of that candle. Truthfully, the easiest way to do that would be to just transform the candle and lower it down until you can't see it but this is a good chance to show a mask. So let's use an ellipse mask, which is gonna create a circle. And to ensure we keep all of the transparent background, we don't wanna plug this directly into the media node itself. Otherwise, it's going to mask out the transparency that we already have. So what we'll do is, we'll add a merge to the end of the Delta key here. And we want to make sure that we plug that into the green arrow, which is the foreground for the merge. And then we'll bring in a background node onto the nodes pane. Once we've brought that in, we want to turn down the alpha setting all the way to zero. And then we'll plug that in to the yellow arrow. And now we can apply our ellipse mask to the merge node itself. So you can see we cut off some of the candle. We can shape this up a little bit to get the rest of it masked out. And then we can soften up the edges of this in the inspector by moving the soft edge slider over just a bit. If we move that slider over too far, the candle is going to become visible again and we don't want that. So let's see how that looks so far back over on the edit page. That is flickering beautifully and then it's a good idea to check these by bringing in a solid color generator and we need to expand that out just a bit there and then just change the color of it to anything and as long as we can see the color behind the candle flame everything's working correctly it's good to do that because if you generate this and then go plug it into a show or a scene that you're working on and you didn't check it, you might find you did it wrong. I am speaking from experience on that. And at this point, we have a very reusable flame. So instead of tying that exclusively to this project, let's render it out as its own effect that we can reuse for other projects. Select your location and name it whatever you want. Then for our encoding, we want to make sure that we render this out as an MOV file so we can keep the transparency. To do that, we need to pick QuickTime as the format. For the codec, we choose GoPro Cineform. And for the type, we select RGB 16-bit. And then make sure you check export alpha. Add it to the render queue and render it out. 
Once that's rendered, bring it back in, place that right onto the timeline, and then import your candlestick image. You can use your rendered out flame as a guide for how long your image needs to be extended out on the timeline. Go ahead and remove your flame video at this point. The rest of our work we're going to be doing within the fusion page. So let's hop over there. You don't have to lay out your nodes the way I'm laying them out here. When I work in fusion I just prefer to have my nodes stacked on top of each other instead of going from left to right. And let's start off by changing the color of this candlestick with a color corrector node. Let's make this look less silvery and give it more of a gold look. When working with a color corrector, make sure to check pre-divide post multiply before you do anything. If you don't check that, it's going to change the color of your entire composition and not just the individual node. Once that's checked, we can change the coloring and adjust the brightness, the saturation, the contrast, however we desire. So that's a nice darkened look for our candlestick. Now let's add in our first merge, which we're going to use to pin up our candle flame video to this candlestick. Bring in your candle flame video and plug that into the green arrow of the merge. Now obviously this doesn't fit perfectly on the candlestick. So we need to add a transform node, which is gonna let us resize it and move it as needed. You can resize it just by grabbing a corner and pulling it inward. And then we can move it by clicking in the center and just pulling it where we need it. Let's zoom in here so we can align it just a little bit better. Looks like there's a little bit of the old candlestick left over here, but that's not a big deal. I don't think anybody's gonna notice it. We'll just use that to line it up to the candlestick image. Now we just need to duplicate it to the other candles. And there are a lot of ways to do that. What we're gonna do in this tutorial right now is just copy the transform node and paste it up right above the existing one. And we'll do that a third time for our third flame. Each of those is going to need their own merge. So let's add two more merges that we can plug them into. And then a fun trick with Fusion is you can use just one media in node and you can connect those up multiple times. So you can reuse an asset over and over without having to bring in multiple copies of the same node. And then we just need to select our transform for each individual candlestick and we'll move those over one at a time and line them up as we want. There is one drawback to using a singular media node and copying it multiple times. If we hit play on this, our candle flames are all dancing in unison because there's nothing different about them. The good news is we don't have to make multiple variations of a candle flame. We can just change a few settings on this existing one. So let's copy and paste our candle flame video and we'll pin each of those up to its own transform node. And now if we just change a couple of settings in the inspector under the trim settings we can make these flames all dance differently from each other the first flame we can leave completely alone just leave it as is it'll start at frame zero but our second flame let's start that at frame 300. now if we sort of scrub through and play the video you'll see that second flame is dancing to its own beat. Then to make sure we don't have any issues, make sure to check the loop checkbox. And that way the video is gonna restart and just keep playing over and over. Let's do the same thing with the third flame. We'll start that at frame 600 and loop it. Now when we play the video, each individual flame is moving independently of the other. 
Okay, so finally, it's time to animate this. And we're going to animate this with one final transform node. Let's make sure before we animate anything that we're on frame zero. Let's go ahead and move our candlestick to a starting position that's not centered. And we can change the angle of it using this angle wheel here. And then we need to set our keyframes. To set a keyframe, just click on the diamonds next to the property that we will be changing throughout this. And then let's pick a frame further in the timeline. So frame 500 will work. And we'll move the candlestick to a new position and change the angle. This time we don't have to click anything. Resolve's gonna automatically set the keyframes for us. So we don't have to touch these. Let's stick with a pattern of every 500 frames. So we'll go to frame 1000 and move the candlestick again and change the angle as well. So now that we have those two keyframes set, if we scrub through the timeline, you'll see that Resolve is gonna animate this for us. So I'm gonna skip ahead 500 frames at a time until I get to the final frame. And each time I'm gonna move the candlestick to a new location and change the angle of it. So here we are. I have all my keyframes set and the candlestick's gonna bob back and forth across the screen here and sort of tilt as it goes. But it does move in a zigzag, very straight line pattern. So we're gonna fix that. We can smooth out the movement of this candlestick by coming to the toolbar up top here, and we're looking for a tool called Smooth, which is right there. All we have to do now is click on an individual point and then click on Smooth, and that's gonna give it a curve instead of a straight V shape. So let's do that for every point we have along this movement. Now with all of those smoothed out, we'll hit play, and instead of a very jaggy movement, we're getting a nice smooth, circular path. You will want to watch your travel path all the way through because you can see here, this went off the screen and that's an easy fix. You can just grab these lines and pull them up and that's going to change its travel path and it'll keep it from going completely off the screen. And once you're happy with your project, we could set this up to render it out. But before we do that, I have one more tip I want to share with you. If you intend to play your effect through a projector against a wall or a window, when it goes to loop, you're going to get this weird cut. Just like that. Well, the way around that, so that we can get a smoother looping playback on this, is that we could do a speed change on that clip and tell it to go in reverse. Now right now, Resolve's not gonna let me do that because this is an image file and it knows it can't play an image backwards. What we can do is right click on the clip that we need to play backwards and select new compound clip. Name it whatever you want doesn't really matter and click create. Now, Resolve will let us use the speed change to reverse this. So let's see what happens now when we get to the end of the first video. You see that there? Now it's just playing backwards, but the same speed which makes it look like a seamless, continuous loop. If you're worried about cuts when your media player loops, you can just copy the first set, then copy the second set, one after the other, for as long as you need. And then that candlestick's just gonna keep moving in a continuous loop for as long as you've set your video. You now have your own floating candlestick effect and you didn't have to rely on anybody else to make it for you. 
So if you're really big into projection effects or projection mapping, this is a great tool to learn so you don't have to rely on anybody else and you can make what you need. Well, that's all I have for you today. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. I'll answer them as soon as I can. Thank you for tuning in and until next time, take care of yourselves.